This is the guitar that I recorded my EP New Beginnings with, and for a while it was my go-to. I used it for everything. It also turned out to be the guitar that drove me away from playing not just RGs, but ultimately Ibanez in general. So the model, what is it? It's an RG... Uh, how do we even find out? Um, sh like, how, how do you find out? A few moments later. I want to say it's a 1521. Let me know in the comments. And I'm sorry uh, for being a, a noob. This guitar has been modded. So let's go over that. So when it came from the factory, it was HSH. It originally had Damasios in it. Since then, we've uh, converted it with Fishman Fluence. Now this particular guitar has the, uh, the Abassi set in there, but I've also got a super five-way switch. <laughs> You get those really, really super sparkly splits. And I really like Tosin's set of pickups. I think they're really, really cool. Uh, we've got the additional voices switch on the tone part, which is another nice feature to have. It just kind of sounds like another set of pickups. I also have uh, the Fishman battery pack here, which is really cool because that allows you to keep the guitar fully charged. I haven't played this guitar in a number of months and the battery still had a, a bunch of life left on it so it's a really cool option to have. Another mod that I did to this guitar is um, I installed locking tuners on it and um, it just makes restrings so much easier. String in there, straight through, snip it, no winds. I, I, I really think that's a, it's a good option to do on a guitar that has a headstock. Uh, my Kiesel, uh, Delos and Hyperdrive both have lock and tuners and it just, it's even easier on, on the Kiesels because the strings literally go straight through the body, super, super quick restrings. Another cool feature about this guitar is the pick guard. So this guitar shipped with HSH and when I went over to HH uh, with the Fishman pickups, I didn't want to just put a blank pick up in the middle or just leave it uncovered, you know, kind of with a big hole there. I got speaking to a guy called AutoVision on Instagram and he made up a couple of custom scratch plates. And this one is the one that has like a sort of blue accent. <laughs> It also has the most fluttery trem <laughs> that I've got in my collection. I don't think I have a guitar that has this long of a flutter. Yeah, it's it's really, really very, very fluttery. Um, we did modify the trem a little bit and we kind of inserted a couple of extra rubber bushes and it, it was basically to stop the trem from hitting metal on metal. And the idea was if it had some rubber in it, when it did hit the, the sort of trem like back of the trem it wouldn't stop it as much it's something like that it's something that me and my tech did a while back and um, whatever we did it makes the the sort of flutter last even longer yeah very very fluttery just keeps going Even when you put your hand on the bridge after a few seconds, you can still feel the vibration. It's pretty crazy. So that's cool. It's also got quite a low action. So when you push the tram all the way down, it kind of does that classic. Choke everything out. By the way, the tone that I'm using today, it's the John Petrucci plugin. But I've got this new um, Tempest overdrive pedal from Fortin. And that's on. So that literally just arrived like a half an hour ago. So I thought I'd stick that in the chain. If we want to compare the John Petrucci with the Fortin amplifier, uh, we can certainly do that as well. So that is the John Petrucci neural plugin, and this is the Fortin. <laughs> It's so weird playing New Beginnings actually on this guitar because this guitar has a really, really super thin neck. I mean, check this out. Although initially I really, really liked that, 
It turns out that now actually I don't find it as comfortable. The Kiesel guitars, um, when, you, when I use their thin profile, I think for me now it's a better balance. It's slightly more rounded. It just fits into my pocket in my hand really, really nicely. So the first thing that I wasn't really gelling with was the weight. When you stand up and play with this guitar, it's quite heavy. I think this guitar has a mahogany body and it's actually one of the heavier guitars that I have in my collection. The other thing was the neck. This guitar doesn't have stainless steel frets, so maybe it's, yeah, you know, that has something to do with it. You know, it's not quite as smooth to bend, but there was one particular thing that was really, really weird. That sent me out of control for a couple of weeks. And when I was sliding around at certain points and certain parts of the neck, I'd feel like my hands or fingers would just stick to the fretboard and it would make me play or make lots of mistakes because of that. And it was the weirdest thing, but I, I sort of would slide up and often land flat. It's like the guitar was causing me to make more mistakes. Really weird. I've never happened, had this happen before. And we'd take all the strings off, we'd make sure there was nothing on the fretboard that shouldn't be on there. We'd even resort to like lighter fluid and burning the fretboard in the end and re-oiling the fretboard. Obviously fresh brand new strings every single time we did something like this and it would play fine for a little bit. And then I'd go to performance mode and then bang, my fingers would stick at random places. It was like the guitar that was suddenly jinxed. It would just force me to play mistakes. And I remember I was stood at the Fishman booth performing and I'm looking over there and there's like Toast and the Bossy and all these other Fishman artists there and I'm feeling this guitar and I, I feel like any second it's going to pull me a semitone short and that, I, that was just an awful feeling. It did happen once or twice during that performance and it was just like, I kind of like just... I learned to live with it at this point but it really stuck with me and from that moment onwards I was really interested in checking out other guitars. Ibanez had just launched the AZ range, but there were still some years away from launching headless models. And this kind of left me really searching for something that would feel really, really comfortable. And you know, when you click with a guitar and it feels like it's an extension of you, you just need a guitar that can take the full assault in any situation, live in the studio, standing up, sitting down, and luckily, with my signature Kiesel, we've got everything absolutely nailed. Anyway, that's my RG. What do you think of this guitar and my issues that I've had with it? Regardless of all that stuff, I'm still super sentimental about this guitar and I think it's really, really cool and really glad that I have it in my collection. If you enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next uh, video.